A short story by Paul McCann, The Enchanted Garden. Once upon a time, the sun came up as it always does, and along the pathway, in the back garden, as they sometimes do, the fairies had left footprints in the talcum powder that I had left there on the night before. So now, all I had to do was to follow these tracks to where they went, and to claim the wish that they have to give to anyone who would find where they live. So I tiptoed merrily along the garden path, and I was very pleased to follow their footprints that brought me to the well at the bottom of the garden. The sun was shining, and all the flowers were leaning toward it. The birds were singing, and all the flowers were dancing in the morning breeze, with colours as beautiful as ever it was in the enchanted garden. It was a perfect day to be wishing and I had some wishes to be made, and all the time in the world to wait for that to happen. I saw the dragonflies looking for signs, and spiders casting their lines around the place where I had set my furry trap, in the well where they lived. There is nothing more inviting for a fairy than chocolate from the happy chocky chalk tree that grows around the cool, fizzy-wizzy, soft drink stream in the green valley of soft, leafy glen in the fairy hills of Evermore. And it was there, about a week ago, that I had went to explore and discovered a few chalky chalk trees and took the fruit back home to my place where I made a plan to leave the bait that would capture a fairy or two near the place where they lived and dwelled. For a fairy cannot resist the smell of the fruit of the chalky chalk tree. So beside the well I left the bait and didn't have long to wait until the first fairy came to grab the sweet chalk cookie. I swiftly dropped the fishing net around the fairy and I said, Hi there, my name's Peggy and you've been captured. So if you want to be set free, you have to give me a wish. The fairy said in a kind of far away accent, Oh, enough of that already. I'm not giving wishes out today. So says I, Oh, I can see. In that case, I'll have to take you inside and leave you in the cage with my parrot. The fairy looked very worried, as there's nothing a fairy fears more than a parrot in a cage. <gasps> oh, hang on. In that case, uh, I'll make an exception. I give her a wish, but first I'm starving. And would love some of that fruit there from the chalky chalk tree, if you would have any to spare for me. I replied, Well, no, I have none to spare at all. All I have is a burger from the fast food joint in the town. Oh, Peggy, if you don't have uh, any chocolate sweet treat, I'd be so sad. Peggy's my name, and I want the wish that you have to give me. So maybe if you give me the wish, I might have a chalk treat for you somewhere. The furry replied, I'm always hungry for chocolate, and if you could promise me a treat, I'll give you what you ask for. I said to the wise-looking pixie, Okay, I'll wish for the crack of gold. Just then, emerging from the undergrowth near the well, came another two magical friends of the fairy in my garden, and one of them said, Oh, uh, did you say you had fruit from a chuck-chuck tree? I replied, And who might be asking? 
Oh, my name is Smirch, the pixie said, and I replied, Well, hello, Smirch. My name is Peggy, and as you can see, I've got one of your kind in my keep, which means you have to grant me a wish. Another little furry ran up and jumped on my shoulder and said, Oh, give me a whiff of that sweet fruit from the furry hills of evermore. So I took out some of the chalky chalk fruit to my pocket and I let the little furry have a smooch for free. The furry swallowed the treat in one gulp and his tummy boom boomed and he started to sing, Oh, furry folk, would you love to eat the sweet, sweet, chalky treat from the sweet, sweet, from the everly more we hills we go suddenly from everywhere around the garden the other furries emerge singing and dancing in the light of the day if you take a look by the bubbling brook in Pogalone's wood I'm told you'll find a crock of gold but for those who know where they grow underneath where the buttercups grow is where you'll find a crock of gold I replied so tell me fairy folk how do i find this place and by the way the chocolate bars are not quite ripe yet because the foil covers are still green but here by the leaf if you look and taste and see the minty cream you'll see what i mean the fairy folk responded if you take a flying horse that we give to you then you're bound to get to the brook near pogalone's wood Suddenly a white horse with wings landed there before me and whispered, Here, jump up on my back, little human thingo, and off we'll go to Bogalone's wood where the wild buttercups grow. So I jumped up on the horse's back and gave her a chucky chuck treat to eat, and off we went flying through the sky. Mmm, mmm, yummity yum, the sweetest taste in all the universe, said the flying horse. I clung to the neck of the horse, who sniffed and neighed and said, I only came for the chalky chalk treats. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Peggy, and I pick Pixie's pockets of their gold. We landed down on the ground beside a marshmallow tree, and the flying horse looked at me and said, It's such a beautiful day, why don't we fly away, back to the well where the fairies dwell? For it's in there where you'll find their crock of gold, down at the very bottom. And I said, oh, What about the gold where the buttercups are, land and the brook of Pokolone's wood? Oh, that's not the real gold they want you to have. For the real gold is at the bottom of the well. See, they know that the fairy's gold at the bottom of the well is the most powerful gold of all. So, we took to the sky, and on we did fly to the well where the fairies dwell. Then down the bottom of the well, I had seen the most powerful gold of all. And the next thing I knew, I awoke in the soft grass, spellbound by a magical scene before me. Up came a bucket from the well, carrying little furries who jumped out and sat down on the soft green grass. And the other furries on horses arrived from every corner of the garden. I am the rainbow brownie, eh? said a quarterling, tugging at the human sleeve. If you would please join us, we really could use your help. The fairy transformed a buttercup into a teacup and poured a drop of marshmallow tea and I climbed up on the flying horse and I said, I sure I'd love to help. Uh, the thing is, Smirch started while stirring her tea, we really need somebody who isn't magic. All the fairies looked at me, and I leaned over and looked into Smirch's eyes and said, uh, Can you really do magic? Uh, that's the trouble, <laughs> said Smirch, blushing. The blue genie has trapped several of our friends, 
Already he can spot us coming before we know what's happened. Smirch remembered his manners and offered the teapot. Oh, here, drink a cup of this magic stuff, and you'll be like us, but not one of us. And sure enough, I drank some of that stuff, and I became like a fairy, sitting in their midst. Uh, so, Piggy, it's you who can rescue our friends from the blue genies, flame at the end of the rainbow. I completely forgot all about the crock of gold and wanted to help rescue the fairies from the blue genie. Uh, so tell me, Smarts, what can I do to rescue your friends? All you have to do is be you and bring in the blue genie a cup of marshmallow tea and a chalky chalk treat and remember to say these words. <coughs> One, two, three, and a wee cup of tea. Four, five, six, a chalk chalk sticks. Seven, eight, nine, it's your sleepy time. And let us do the rest. Mm, so off I went on the flying horse to the end of the rainbow. Suddenly, the blue genie came sliding down the edge of the rainbow and asked, <gasps> So, tell me, uh, you with no magic, what do you want and who are you? My name's Peggy, and I brought you some marshmallow tea and chucky chuck treats. W would you like to share some time with me? The blue genie sat down with me at the end of the rainbow, where we had a tea party, and I said the words that were given to me. One, two, three, wee cup of tea, four, five, six, chucky chuck sticks, Seven, eight, nine, it's your sleepy time. The blue genie fell into a deep sleep, and suddenly the furry folk appeared from nowhere and took the lamp from the genie's pocket and rubbed it with a magic cloth, and out of the spout popped seven little furries singing and dancing. Oh, hip, hip, hooray, at last we're free from the lamp of the blue genie. In an instant we were transported by a sunbeam to the bottom of the well in the enchanted garden. Ah, a great job, said Smirch, who lifted up his arms and a crop of gold came floating down through the air and landed at my feet. Smirch continued, oh, thank you ever so much, for, and for you a rich reward, Peggy. A crock of the finest gold with our blessing. I took the crock of gold and was lifted out of the well in a bucket by my mother, who said, Peggy, didn't I tell you before not to go down the well? Yes, but look what I have found, mother. When she saw the crock of gold, oh, she was so happy, almost delirious with joy. And from that day... We have lived happily ever after in the enchanted garden. The end. <laughs>